All right, good morning, everybody. We're on a road trip to California today, and uh, what we're doing is we're picking up a 1971 Roadrunner from my dad that he bought. But uh, first thing we're gonna do is inspect it, make sure everything's good on it, and uh, then we'll finish the deal. So with the uh, theme of today's video is gonna be, what do you look for when you inspect the Mopar? That's what we're gonna do. Love the building. Definitely an old dealership. I'll have to see what the history is. Ooh, dark convertible. Not a huge fan of those wheels, but uh, yeah. This place is called Sierra Classics and Imports. We'll see what their inventory looks like. All right, here she is. This is a, looks like a pretty nice car. It's a, the thing that's special about this one is it's a Road Rover bumper car. So this was optional on these. Uh, front and rear rubber bumpers uh, otherwise they were chrome but it just really makes the car look better uh it's just uh, you know you get rid of the chrome it's all body color it just looks pretty good and the thing you always look for on these is these on the plymouths they have a two-piece rubber bumper so the top is kind of a lip like that and the bottom is kind of like a thick urethane paint um and it looks just really really good that's what you always want to look for but this car's got documentation has the window sticker it's got all that on it it's got a rear rubber bumper too uh, it's got some options added um, it's got an aftermarket suspension and stuff too uh, the orange interior is kind of cool too I can't remember if that's what we're doing I'll have to look at the fender tag but uh, yeah so what we're doing today is we're just inspecting this thing just make sure it is what they said it was and uh, one, one thing you always want to ask for is for a lift um, if they have one available it's a perfectly reasonable request then you can really get underneath because we have a saying at the shop that the uh, lift don't lie. Once you get it up underneath, you know, if there's frame rail rust or horrible repairs, like that's where you're gonna see it. You're gonna see it underneath on a lift because that's where people didn't fix the stuff. You know, they can look super pretty up top, but until you look underneath, it's really hard to say. So let's get her up on the lift. All right, now we got the underside. I apologize for the background commercials. I, uh, they have the radio on and I can't help that. So hopefully this doesn't make this super annoying. So. The biggest thing I was concerned about this is they've got a front tubular uh, K-member on this with control arms and coilovers. And I'll be honest, I don't like these. Um, the, pro the biggest problem I have with these is, so it's a coilover setup that goes to the upper shock mount. So basically all of the load of the car goes to the shock mount. And if you don't reinforce that, which I don't believe this kit does. So I gotta look underneath and look from the top again. But if you don't reinforce that upper inner fender area, it'll crack. It's not meant to take the load. See on a tor on a on a Mopar, so see right there they have a they're, they're torsion bars. So the bar goes through there up to here to the lower control arm right here. Obviously it's all been removed on this because it has the uh, tubular K member and control arms and all that fun stuff, but it, it's all been removed. So um, so your entire load of the car is on the coilovers. So um, my dad's strongly considering trying to go back to stock on this, but I'm actually really curious. I want to drive this back to back with a, another B body that's stock. I really want to do like a comparison and uh, we're going to do that soon. I really want to do a back to back drive and let you guys know, like, does it handle better? Does it ride better? Um, I have a feeling I know what the answer is. And uh, I have a feeling the answer is probably about what I expect. It's not going to make that much of a difference, but um, I guess we'll find out because I'm really curious. I've never really had a chance to drive one of these back to back with all this. So, and the car looks really solid. Um, there's, I mean, there's just a lot of little things on this car that need to get fixed. Like, you know, there's no splash shields on the disc brakes. I mean, that's their Willwood disc brakes, which that stuff's just expensive and racy and it's not really meant for the street. Um, we definitely want to get that fixed. Um, there's an open line here. I'm pretty sure that's just for the emissions. I think this is a California emissions car. Looking at all the lines underneath here. Uh, let's say it's numbers matching. Uh, so the VIN's right there on the engine. So if you look at the engine, it's on the uh, passenger side in the middle on a pad. Um, but I said, you want to look at everything here. So you want to look at the casting date on the motor, make sure that's right. There's numbers on top we're going to look at here in a minute. You want to look at the casting date. So, you know, 9, 14, 70. Um, you know, we just looked at a couple cars last week that uh, the VIN was restamped on it. So you gotta, you gotta look at the whole picture because just because it has the VIN stamp on there doesn't mean it's correct. You gotta make sure it's the right font. You gotta make sure everything looks good on that. 
Uh, there's the trans VIN there, it matches too. And then on the trans, what you want to do is go to this side of the pan, and then that is the part number right there. Sorry, it's not focusing on me. So 351. Uh, 5846, that's the right number for it. Then it has the 10,000 calendar date, and that all matches everything. So everything looks really good on that, so numbers matching. Uh, it's got, you know, exhaust on it, which, you know, it's it's old. It's been on there a while. It's got a mini starter. Floor pan looks pretty good. Frame rails look pretty good. Uh, yeah, the big thing on boat boards you want to look at for is, uh, you know, rocker rust, that's where they go, lower fenders, uh, rear frame rails. They don't really do that around here. I mean, it depends where the car is from, but if it's from the East Coast, you know, make sure you look at the rear frame rails. Um, look over here, so the uh, it's missing the body plugs and the lower extensions right there. So right there, it's supposed to be a body plug, which it's kind of a big deal. You want that in there because you're going to get water and road dirt. I mean, not that the thing's going to see a lot of rain. But you can see that these have been done. You can see, you see the seam right there. So you can tell if that's been done. So the, the factory has little tabs here and here. So you can tell if it's original or not. And it's definitely been replaced, probably with the lower quarters too. Not a big deal, let's say it was done pretty good. Um, but just, you know, it's just something to look at. You know, some sheet metal's been replaced on this thing. You know, gas tank's not supposed to be black. It's just very amateurish restoration, which is, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, you know, the price that my dad's paying for this is commiserate with, um, you know, the condition of the car. It's got stripes on the back. Um, Pretty sure that's a real rubber bumper. Feels like it. It's got the Lestro, Lestromatic, that's what they called it. Um, 11 inch rear brakes, which uh, that's the big brakes on this, which they don't really, they don't really use that much rear brake on this. They don't really need it. Uh, it's got air shocks. I do not like those at all. Um, again, the problem here is you pump them up and then it puts all of the force of the rear suspension, not on the leaf springs, it puts it on that cross member. And then we found this a lot of times you put air shocks on it will crack that, especially if you're driving it hard. Um, and still got leaves on the back, which, you know, tried and true system, Mopar had a really good system. They have the clamp on the front. So we take off it, um, you know, plants really nicely and goes pretty good. Um, so drive shaft's good. It's got a 49 case pumpkin. That all looks good. Um, there's a date code right there on it. That looks right. 225 zero, so 225 day of 70. That all looks right. Uh, keep in mind, a uh, for 71s, the model year started August 1st, 1970. So if it's uh, you know, a 1970 day code on 71, that's still correct because they started uh, started it earlier. Let's see if there might be some repairs in there, maybe at some point. Uh, I brought my paint gauge too. I'm gonna show you how to use that. Those are pretty neat and I'll tell you a lot of the sins. But yeah, everything looks good underneath here. I don't see anything scary. Um, this is pretty much exactly what I expected, exactly what I looked. You know, the, the dealership was pretty good, provided us with good photos, and it looks like they were pretty honest with it. Uh, I don't really see any major problems underneath here. A uh, couple things you look for too, you know, see the rub on the exhaust there, so it's actually hitting the shock. So when they put the exhaust in, they didn't do a very good job doing that because it's actually hitting the shock. Yeah, I mean, if I'm going like a Survivor or OE car, I'd go a little bit more in depth and figure out like, you know, part numbers on the lease springs and all that, but it doesn't really matter on this car. You know, we're just looking to make sure it's solid and make sure it's not like a super rusty East Coast car. Um, bunch of emission stuff back here. You can see there's a little gap there. That's where all the emission stuff goes. Is I think this is probably a California emissions car. I gotta look at the fender tags. I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure it is. All right, well, everything looks pretty good underneath here. That's exactly what I expected. Um, oh, what else do I want to show? Uh, any of you watch this channel very long, you know my biggest pet peeve is uh, no blackout behind the grill. This does not have blackout behind the grill. That is the absolute first thing we're going to do when you get this thing home is fix that because that's just a giant red flag of the person restoring it doesn't know Moparts very well because they didn't black it out. Um, it just looks hideous. You shouldn't be able to see body colors of the grill. It looks terrible. So you can see that right there. See how bad that looks? Um, that's definitely something that we're going to fix ASAP when we get it home. All right, let's get it down and uh, look at the engine bay. This has nothing to do with the car, but uh, I was trying to figure out how to put this lift down and all they have is this cable on the other side to pull it go down. That just seems scary and unnecessary that you have to go underneath the car to release the locks. It should have a release here. I don't know what brand of lift this is, but uh, it's not a good one. All right, down we go. These just have a goofy release. They're actually down there. You have to pull down on it. 
I love the little touches Mopar did back then. The little Roadrunner guy on there. Just looks really neat. All right, well, here's the engine bay. It's uh, not an AC car, it's been added. Um, but again, you know, that's not really not a big deal to me. And today's day and age, having air conditioning on a car is really not a bad thing. It makes it a lot more comfortable. Obviously, it's not stock, but you know, it is what it is. Um, not a big fan of the aftermarket uh, master cylinder either. Um, pretty sure this should have three speed wipers and air grabber, but again, the air grabber's been added. None of that's original. Um, Roadrunner horn, of course. I love Roadrunner horns. But yeah, so see down here, what I was talking about underneath. So you got coilovers on this, and there's no reinforcement on that, on the inner fender. It just, that that's not designed to handle the load of the car. Like the really good K members, and I'm not sure which one this is. I think this one's Magnum Force. Um, but they, they have reinforcement for that, so that's actually on a stub underneath. Um, and on this car, it's like, that's not, it's not a good design. I'll just put it that way. Um, I don't know if there's any engineers watching this, but that's not a good design. Um, again, that's not a deal breaker on the car. We knew that going in, but it just kind of bothers me a little bit. Okay, so some of the stuff we looked for on these, you know, you wanna check date codes on the exhaust manifold. That's a pretty easy thing to do. It's right up top, 10, 13, 70. That's perfect. I'm sure that's the original manifold of the car. The uh, SPD or the scheduled production date is December 21st. Uh, let me go ahead and do a fender tag decode for you. Sorry, it's a little hard to read. They got some really thick orange paint on here. It's really hard to read. So uh, E65 is 3834 barrel. D32 is 7709. Uh, RM23 is the VIN. R is B Body Plymouth. M is Roadrunner. 23 is 2 door hardtop. N is 3834 barrel. 1 is the year, 1971. G is the plant, St. Louis. 163021, that is the last six of the VIN. EV2 is heavy orange, paint. Uh, H2X9 is black interior, so the uh, orange interior is not original, but it looks pretty bitchin'. That wasn't a factory original combo, though. You could get orange interior, but originally it was a black bench. They added buckets. TX9 is the black upper door frame. C21's SPD, uh, December 21st of 19 uh, 194534 is the Vaughn. Uh, EV2 is the top color. So if it had a vinyl top, and have a code there, but it's uh, not, it's a painted top. See right there, no vinyl top. Uh, U is uh, built for US specs. Uh, A45 is the spoiler package. Uh, A87 is decor package. Uh, B11 is heavy duty brake, so it originally had uh, 11 inch drums. G36 is dual mirrors, which came with the rubber bumper package. J45 is hood pins. J68 is rear window levers. I'm actually, I, I didn't think it had it, but it does. Uh, but they're supposed to be black, not orange. Uh, J78, uh, that's the spoiler. Uh, front spoiler, J89, J81 is the back spoiler. M21 is drip rail. N41 is dual exhaust. N42 is tips. R11 is radio. V21 is hood blackout. V8X is the uh, roof stripe. You can see the inspection stamps over there showing you that it's a real car. Yeah, this has the famous air grabber hood, which is pretty awesome. So it goes up and there's teeth on it when it goes up. So if you're next to somebody at the light, it just goes up with little teeth on it. Evan's gonna try to open it, but it's kind of hard to open without vacuum. It fights against you, there's a spring to go down. Uh, so those are the 22-inch radiator that's absolutely original in this. So it'd be, probably be nice to have a little bit more cooling with the AC, but I'm sure that's fine. Um, as long as everything's new, it's got the fan shroud, all that stuff's there. Um, that's the correct air grabber air cleaner. Um, kind of curious if it kept any of the original parts. They probably didn't. Um, Two-speed wipers, um, bolts radiator on the firewall. Yeah, I mean, everything looks pretty good here except for the blockout. You know, there's a few little things like this bundle of hoses kind of bothers me. It'd be nice to have those a little bit better organized. There's supposed to be a bracket on the alternator there to kind of hold the heater hoses up. Um, so it'd be nice to have that, you know, all the AC stuff's there. So we'll uh, we'll get this thing out and run it and make sure everything works, but I just want to get done with the lift first. A couple more basic things to check. You guys want to check coolant. Was flashlight. Yeah, it's a little bit low, but it's green. You just want to look to see if it's milkshake or anything. That's just a sign of a cracked block, but everything looks good there. Uh, obviously, you want to check the oil too, just see what that looks like. 
lipsticks over here on this. It's very, very black. So probably needs an oil change. I don't think this thing's had a lot of miles on it, but the oil level looks good. Don't see any water in it. That's all you're looking for. But uh, yeah, it looks like it needs an oil change pretty bad. Can check the transmission, but it's uh, kind of buried between that uh, gaggle of lines back there. So on a 383 or a 400, which is the, the low deck block on a Mopar, the, the numbers are down here on this pad back here underneath the distributor. And fortunately there's a lot of stuff in the way. I can't really see them. Um, it's gonna be kind of hard to show this on camera. So on a 440, it's up here, it'd be underneath the compressor. On a 383, it's on that flat pad down there. And it should be G383 with the assembly date and uh, an HP next to it. So I'm gonna see if I can clean that off to look at that number. So it uh, doesn't have the original carburetor. This is an Edelbrock, but these work great. I mean, just a little electric choke Edelbrock. I mean, this is kind of the way to go. Um, they work pretty good. Um, ow. Just cut myself on the radio there. Ouch. Um, but yeah, these are nice, reliable. Uh, I was at the stock intake on it. Um, you know, everything looks pretty good down here. Uh, no vacuum advance, which is interesting. Um, so we'll have to let Jamie loose on this one. Uh, electronic distributor, uh, again, not a big deal. That's uh, it's all good on that. Um, where's the ECU box though? There's that points. New wires are coming out of it. That's what I'm looking at. No, I guess it's points. No, it's still a points distributor. Interesting. They don't convert it to electronic. Sorry, I just assumed they always have. Um, you know, again, just this. This, none of this is a deal breaker. It just kind of shows you the quality of the job they did on this. It's kind of a quick one, but see those two holes on the left there in the firewall? That's where the uh, original heat hoses came out of, and like, just plug those. Like, you don't want open holes in the firewall. Another one there too. It's just, yeah, it just kind of shows you the quality of the work on this car, that it wasn't like a super high-end car, super high-end restoration. Um, you know, the inner fender shields are supposed to be black, you know, all the, see the that cam, the washer down there in the nut? That's how to adjust the alignment. Those aren't supposed to be painted. They were just lazy and painted everything orange when they did it. Um, it's interesting, it's still points. Huh, interesting. Okay, I wanna get the bottom of this. So yeah, it looks like it's a Petronix kit in it, so which makes sense. There's no ECU box. These work okay, I've had kind of mixed luck with them. Um, but again, I'm not sure why there's no vacuum advance. Um, that's probably a tuning thing they couldn't figure out. So uh, we'll let uh, Jamie work his magic on this next week and hopefully get it running a little better. Like the oil cap's leaking a little bit there. It's got the wrong breather on it. This is all really easy stuff to fix. I and mean, we can get this all sorted out in a week. Um, and we will. Um, you know, like they got the uh, EC lines are literally rubbing on the throttle cable. Like, you can't do that. Like, that's not okay. It's on the kick down there. Like, that's going to rub through eventually. And it's just, again, it's just, the level of detail on this is not super high, I'll be honest with you. Uh, we'll with adjustable prop valve, you know, it's all that stuff. and. I don't know. My dad's thinking about going back to stock on this. We might do that. And the coolest part on a runner, the uh, horn. <laughs> and here's the trunk. Again, this is another place where body guys just don't really finish their work back here. So there's really bad work. You can really tell. It comes the car cover, which is nice. So the thing I always look for on quarter panels is look for original undercoating. So like, you see up here, that's original undercoating, that's original quarter. But you can see down here, there's a seam down there where they did the lower quarters. Again, none of this is a huge deal. It's not a deal breaker, but it's just nice to know how much sheet metal has been replaced. Looks like there's been some work there on the wheel tubs. Obviously the extensions will be have been done, you know, pull up the mat. You can see the welds right there. Those are obviously not factory welds, but it looks like it was done decently at least. Um, they don't really make trunk pans for these, so. But you know, everything was pretty solid back here, but it probably had a trunk, probably had extensions. Uh, Jack's up there, fire extinguisher's always nice. Uh, this side again, the undercoating up there, and they did lower quarter panel patches, so yeah, I don't see anything too scary back here. Um, a lot of parts store hardware, which I don't like for using the original stuff, but I don't know, I, I'm a nerd purist, so it kinda is what it is. Jack label, spoiler label up there. Yeah, everything looks good back here.
Pretty sure I mentioned earlier it's not a louver car. It actually is a louver car, which is really cool. That's a super rare option on these. Um, but they're supposed to be black, I believe. I don't think they're supposed to be orange. But I gotta research that a little bit. They did a bunch of uh, mono, you know, they tried to make everything orange, the rubber bumper, so I could be wrong about that. It could be, it could be orange, but I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be black. If anybody knows, let me know. I don't know for sure. This has the 15 inch rally wheels, which always look good. Um, Looks like it actually has the correct trim rings. If you get the six and a half trim rings, they, they don't go all the way into the wheel. These actually, look, I think they're actually the right ones. Yeah, 255 60 15s. Nice meats in the front. I think the fronts are a little smaller. Which again, it's kind of a good look on these. I don't really mind that at all. Yeah, 215 70s on the front. So a little bit staggered. It's a good look. Uh, 2016 Safety Inspection NS National Street Bar Association. I have seen this drag race. Um, there's the VIN. Um, getting that matches the fender tags. That's all good there. Matches the numbers on the bottom. So another big thing you want to look at is documentation. This is extremely important because this is the value of the car, basically. Um, you know, if you can kind of, you know, show um show your work on this how much restoration's been in broadcast sheets window stickers it's really really important um i actually haven't been through this yet so we're going to be looking through this at the same time um so yeah so there's the magnum force setup which was done in 09 for fifty five hundred dollars what a waste of money but i digress and then labor was like a thousand to put it in i guess Pollock Auto Restoration. Huh, that's actually not bad for putting it in, to be honest with you. Except I think that's just parts. So it looks like the paint was done in 2010. Um, yep, lower quarters, trunk drop-offs, all that fun stuff. Yeah, lots of receipts in here. It's good to have this documentation. It really helps. So yeah, I'm not going to be going to add up those receipts, but there's like thirty, forty thousand dollars in receipts there. So considering the price my dad paid, um, I think it's pretty good. So here's a it's called the Maroni sticker or window sticker as people like to call. Uh it's a copy of it. We do have the real one back here. Uh, just a couple interesting things on here. If you guys want to help decode, so that's the plant, VIN number, that's the scheduled production date. Uh C21 is December 21st. GR is G is the plant St. Louis, R is the first letter of VIN. That's the Vaughn. That's the dealer number right there, which was Presnell Motors in Tennessee. Uh, V2 is Hemi Orange. If it was a vinyl top, it would have another two uh, letter and a uh, number and a letter after that showing that. H2X9 is the bench seat, which we've already talked about. Let's say it was a sold car, which means it was probably ordered. Uh, pretty standard roadrunner. Uh, aerodynamic spoiler package, $59.40. Uh, decor group, $85.60. Uh, torque flight transmission because remember on a roadrunner the three speed was standard so on the 68 roadrunner it was either automatic or four speed uh, but on this one the three speed was standard so you either got an automatic or a four speed it was more money uh, ev2 high impact paint fifteen dollars and five cents uh 383 four barrel uh, dual racing mirrors which i believe came as part of the most dramatic bumper package you had to buy those uh, hood tie down pins uh undercoated car louvered backlight uh, M73, that's what makes this car interesting and really, really cool. Uh, less dramatic bumpers, front and rear, includes uh, applique, uh, exhaust tips. Those are still optional on a Roadrunner. You still have to buy them. AM radio is obviously optional. V8X, C-pillar, and roof stro strobe stripes. Uh, rally wheels, so it originally had 14-inch rally wheels. Pretty neat. Uh, number down here is 1214. That's the date the... Uh, sticker was printed so my guess is the car was probably built a little bit early because i think they took a christmas break uh the g62 is the uh that's the train routing number from the plant to the to the dealership uh it was 3995.75 originally pretty cool uh, more bodywork receipts wow i mean when you got 20 receipts at 1500 to 2000 dollars it adds up real fast so i think that's just copies uh, this is cool. Here's a CD of the uh, restoration pictures. Uh, here's the broadcast sheet. And uh, uh, again, uh, M73. That's the important one on here. That's the one we're looking for. It does have wheel lip moldings. Interesting. Huh. Okay. I originally had wheel lip moldings. 
Yep, 845, 87. Uh, I'm not going to decode this broadcast sheet. It's going to bore you guys. One day I'll do another one. Uh, here's a press car. Um, it's a very similar car. In fact, that looks almost identical to this car. Um, that happened a lot. You know, whatever the advertising cars were, that's the one. Pretty sure that grill's supposed to be black on the car and it's silver. That's something else we're going to have to fix. Um, remember, this car didn't come with an air rubber hood, so that is pretty much this car. Although that really looks like an airbrush picture, but uh, it's hard to say. Um, I think that's all the receipts from the restoration. $26,500. Sounds about right. Uh, here's another broadcast sheet. That's cool. There's actually two broadcast sheets. Uh, there's a copy of it. Here's the original. There's the original window sticker. Uh, we'll copy the broadcast sheet. Uh, here's shows it went to. Uh, Southwest Mini Nationals. Lots of trophies. Show favorite. More receipts add up. There's the public restorations and yeah. So, I mean, here's his documentation. This is really great that this is all here. It really helps with the value of the car. Um, yeah. And here's all the restoration shots. Like, yeah, this car's legit. It's got a lot of good stuff on it. I mean, it needs some little stuff, but, uh, having all this is really, really nice. So. All right. Let's do a little tour of the interior. It's got, a. Uh... 150 speedo, which is standard on a Roadrunner. It's got 694 miles. I'm assuming they probably reset that after the restoration. That would be my guess. Uh, it's got a AM FM radio, which is a nice upgrade. Got a tag. I don't think it originally came with the tag. I don't think that was on the fender tag. Uh, it's got aftermarket air. Those are the vents down there. Here's the uh, air driver switch right here. It's kind of cool. So closed, open, open on the hood. Uh, brake release. Uh, the lights and wipers are over there gauges. Oh, they had some nice touches on a Roadrunner. They put the uh, Roadrunner plaque on the dash. That was the same from 71 to 74. Slapstick shifter with the console. Again, this is originally a bench seat car, so all the stuff's been added. I don't know what that is. Extra hood pin. Uh, generic hood pin. As mentioned before, the orange interior is not original, but uh, it was originally black, but uh, it doesn't look too bad. I think that's a vintage air AC system. Mylar is coming up a little bit on that door panel there, so I don't want to make it that fixed. That's just from, you know, driver hitting. Yeah, interior looks pretty good. Headliner looks pretty good. Whoever did that did a pretty good job. Sun visors. Review mirrors got a couple things. Hi, everybody. Yeah, I shoot with an iPhone. Side mirror. Yeah, everything looks good in here. He's uh, the guy's getting all the cars out for the day. We're, we got here before they open, so uh, we'll be able to start this thing up pretty soon. And I'll show you what it sounds like. All right, now I'm gonna show you where the uh, body numbers are on this car. Because very important, you wanna make sure the uh, hidden body numbers match the VIN, fender tag, everything. Okay, so to me, this is the most important part of the car. I cannot emphasize how important it is that you have a car with numbers that all match. So you wanna check the VIN number right there. 163021. We'll check the fender tag here. 163021. Those both match. You want to check. There's a uh, Mylar VIN number on the door right here. That matches. So 1270 is the, the build date. And then the 163021. That all matches. Okay, so now we're going to look at the hidden body numbers, but unfortunately it is blocked by this bracket. So Evan's going to take this off real quick. It's for the AC condenser, but again, it's real important to check these. You want to make sure everything's numbers matching on this thing. So we're going to take this bracket off real quick and hopefully we can move it a little bit so we can see the body number on here. All right, so Evan moved the bracket there. You can see the body number there. So it's G1, G's plant, one's the year, and the 163021. Um, yep, that looks perfect. All right. So put the condenser back on and then the other body number is up here on the cowl kind of a usual stamping on an e-body they usually put them up there on a 71 sample this car it's over here but yep looks good again again g1 163021 everything looks really good there on the front suspension they did here they have to it's a really goofy steering column i don't know if they cut the original one or i'm not sure how that works but i really hope there's still collapsible part of that because uh it was not this kind of dangerous actually, but yeah, they have to have a a thing like that to make all this rack and pinion stuff work. So again, it's nothing major, just a bunch of little stuff that's bothering me a little bit. 
pretty sure that's the wrong valve cover. And there's a lot of little stuff we can fix on this to make it a little more correct and a little more nice. Oh, they don't have a clutch fan on it. It's a solid fan. Again, that's a good way to free up about five horsepower putting a clutch fan on it. And this should have a clutch fan. Interesting. So this is uh, something I bought a few years ago. This is a paint meter gauge, or it's coating thickness is what they call it. But this is a really neat tool. And basically what it does is you put it up against the car and it tells you how many, how thick the paint is basically. And you can tell if there's like major Bondo, major like previous work. It's fantastic. You can tell original paint on this. The like original paint's usually like four mils. And then like a good aftermarket paint job is usually like eight to 10. Um, but it's really easy to tell. And Basically what you want to do is you want to do the usual areas, you know, it's like I was kind of telling you earlier where these things rust, it's, you know, the bottom of the fenders, rockers, lower quarters, you know, that's the kind of stuff, you know, up in the A pillar up there, uh, if they had a vinyl top, um, this is a really cool tool for that. So let me show you how this thing works. All right, a little Rocky Mountain Way going on in the background. So yes, yeah, so you turn it on, basically it's got a, a little puck right there. So what you do is you put that up against the car. So again, I always check lower quarters the lower here so that is 10.59 that's actually not too bad um, you know as I said like you want to be like 8 to 10 on a nicely restored car because you know you always there's always a little bit of body filler there's primer there's base clear is a little thicker than the original enamel 11 there 11 there again really not too bad that's pretty good that's what we're looking for once you get like if it's off the chart or like 30 that's where you start getting a little scared 8.4 that's good 11 that's good but this is basically like an x-ray machine. You can kind of go through and like, um, you know, if there's like major rust where they, they didn't fix it very well. So that's 17, that's a lot. Um, that's not what I like to see. Ooh, 28. So this is a real common spot here. There's actually a seam right here where the quarter panel goes in. A lot of times you gotta put a lot of filler there. So, but yeah, there's been, there's quite a bit of bondo there. Yeah, 45 there. So that means there's a ton of bondo on this quarter panel right here. Again, that's what you expect with a car like this. It's not surprising. But yeah, 39 means there's a lot of body filler down here. When it's like off the chart, you gotta be a little scared. But yeah, they, yeah, it's a little bit better up there. It's always worse the lower you get, cause that's where they rust. Yeah, 34, 27, yeah, there's a lot of filler in these quarter panels. But again, this is what I expect. I mean, it's not good, but it's not like a deal breaker. Yeah, see, it's really good back here. So there must have been rust up on the front of the quarter that they fixed in there. Because it's definitely had lower patches on it. But they may have just done filler instead of that. Yeah, this quarter panel is really good. Up there is not. Do you want to top of the deck lid here? So 16, 17. Yeah, a little bit higher than you want. But again, it's not a huge deal. None of this is a deal breaker. 16 up there. A bit of dirt in the quarter. Eight, that's really good. Yeah, so that's what you want to see. So they did really good work over here. But I bet that other quarter panel had a bunch of rust in it. 29, yeah, a bunch more filler up here. Same thing as the other side. 22, 10, seven. Yeah, it's good up here. There's probably some rust there they had to fix. So yeah, just kind of a neat tool. I can tell you a lot about a car, you know, when you, you don't really know how much Bondo and filler is in it till you uh, really strip it down to bare metal. This kind of gives you the, ooh, 33. Yeah, that's pretty bad. So the other fender was pretty good. This one must've had a bunch of rust on the bottom and they just kind of filled it. So yeah, there's a bunch of Bondo in this quarter panel. It's pretty good up there. So they just did a lower patch down here and then put a lot of body filler in. But yeah, kind of a neat tool to kind of basically x-ray the car. I don't know how else to describe it. Just a little interesting, Evan just noticed, it's actually a, a non-tinted windshield, which are getting pretty hard to find. Usually there's a band on the top if they're tinted and... I don't think it's actually the original windshield. So there's usually a Pentastar in the middle down here. So they actually put a clear windshield back in, which you can't even really get these anymore. Um, I mean, that is absolutely original to the car, but if you do an AC, I almost would've put a tinted windshield in, but yeah, not a big deal. All right, I'm gonna have Evan fire this up for us so I can uh, really wanna see how this cold starts. I wanna get, get this on video. Fire right up, got some belt squeal, but that's good. That fired right up, that's the good old, that, 
uh, out of our car with an electronic choke. Interesting, it only has one AC belt. I guess that's just the way they designed it. It's got the idler. This is an aftermarket kit, so it's meant to retrofit to a non-AC car. So they put the idler pulley on and all that to make this all work. It's a triple lower pulley that they have. One for the alternator, one for the AC, one for the power steering. Rocket pinion and all that. Yeah, that's starting great. See the day smoke. Oh, everything looks pretty clean. cars around here. Cougar project. And most of these inside last night. Z car project. Blazer. Not really sure what they're into, but they got some cool stuff here. I love old play frames. That is cool. Prolo Chevrolet Santa Cruz. Also, yeah, Santa Cruz. It says 428 Eliminator on that. I'm not sure if that's original or not. Yeah, I need to get me one of these. That's a really nice little setup they got there to take pictures. All right, deal's done. I think I just noticed this. I think that's a 70 console. It's supposed to be an ashtray back there in 71. All right, let's do a quick driving video on this. All right, let's see how she drives with a, uh, I think it's Magnum Force front end, and rack and pinion. Busy in Reno today. Nice part, it runs really good. All the gauges seem to work. Tack works. Um, AC does not work. It's something we have to figure out when we get home. I'm assuming it probably just needs a recharge. But saying that, this is a nice car. It's solid. It's not like rusty frame rails or anything. Everything looks pretty good on it. I think it's a good car. It just needs a little bit of love. Does the radio work? No. The radio does not work. That's a bummer. No, it's dead. HVAC works. So no AC. Well, that's hot even with the temperature off. That's not great. It's already 80 here. It's gonna be over 90 here today. So we're trying to get home tonight. So we're trying to get this finished. Okay. Well, time to load this sucker up and head towards home. This is Tom from Rocket Restorations. Really appreciate everybody watching. We'll talk to you soon.